Greetings, I'm Rob Simpson outside of Dublin, Ireland, and I'm here to talk hockey. That's right, not Gaelic football, not hurling, not rugby, ice hockey, as the Europeans call it, in Belfast to the north, and here we'll take a look at the coolest game on ice, on the Emerald Isle. We'll check out the Boston Bruins in an all-star battle, also how the Boston-Ireland connection is helping to keep Irish hockey alive. Next, Catholic and Protestant children as line mates perpetuating peace, and later, more than a few giants of pro hockey up in Belfast. It's Emerald Ice, Boston, Ireland, hockey. Brought to you in part by Glacial Energy, a steadfast supporter of the Irish American Hockey Association. Glacial Energy gives you the power to choose. Before the Boston Bruins headed to the Czech Republic to open their season against the Phoenix Coyotes in Prague, they took a little detour to Belfast, Northern Ireland. This little known hockey market, the home to a UK elite league team, is buzzing with hardcore fans. Why do I love hockey? I think it's just a fabulous sport. We've been following it now for five years, I think, and uh, we'd go over to the US when we get a chance, pick up the NHL there. It's, it's just a pretty cool game. What can you say? It's a man's game. It's played very, very fast. Great game. What do you Great think game. about when he says it's a man's game? I, I know some women Oh, are I think good. lots of the ladies like it as well. Maybe for different reasons, but they do. Although the exhibition game was a bit of a mismatch, NHLers against stars of a lesser league, the locals held up pretty well, and the experience and entertainment were priceless. Well, it was uh, it was introduced to us by the, by the league, and Todd, the GM here, really was pushing hard. And uh, I think in order of, of his wish list was Boston, New York, Chicago, because of the Irish roots. And um, you know, it's been a great experience for us. The guys have enjoyed it. Um, the city's really welcomed us. It's been fantastic. A chance for the Bruins and the NHL to get in touch with another European fan base while for one Bruin, a chance to get in touch with his roots. Feel Northern Irish because your mom's Northern Irish? Yeah, uh, with all the attention I've been getting the last few days, I, I feel like I should be. Uh, uh, it's, it's awesome. I've never been back here. She's never been back here, so it's, uh, it's good to finally get here. And family still around, or how'd that go? Yeah, uh, cousins, aunts, uncles, all, all that stuff. Uh, my mom, a lot of my mom's cousins. We met up yesterday for lunch, uh, spent a few hours with them, getting to know them. Uh, I see them throughout the last, you know, 30 years back in Canada, but uh, not a full sit-down stuff like yesterday. It was good. What about uh, Belfast? What do you think of the town? So far, so good. I don't. We didn't spend enough time here, as far as I'm concerned. We got a week in Prague, but I wish we were. Uh, I wish we were staying here for a few more days. Uh, it's a great city. Everyone's so friendly. It's all so nice. Thornton's teammates and members of the organization of all nationalities and backgrounds enjoyed the hospitality as well. You read about Belfast over the years of, of all the uh, conflict here and, and so you're coming here and your guard's up a little bit uh, and there's still a lot of reminders of, of those conflicts but people are really nice and you know, it, uh, friendly pubs and, and uh, you know, it's, it, it's a nice uh, it's, it's a nice mid-sized European city and, and uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of history here, both good and bad, but there's a lot of history here. Obviously the city has a lot more to it than, you know, than bombs and trouble and, you know, we, we've, we've gotten, uh, you know, gotten to see a little bit of that as well. I mean, the Titanic uh, where they built it, it's right by the rink and the people have been tremendous. Uh, very, very hockey enthusiastic too. We've been well received. But while it's fun and a cultural diversion, this trip is all business. This exhibition is just one stop along the long hockey road, one with preferably a Stanley Cup waiting at the end, especially for a talented team which had an amazingly disappointing playoff exit last season. We have some unfinished business from last year. Um, um, for sure we want to do better and um, we have all the tools uh, in place. Uh, guys are really motivated and um, um, you know we can do it we just have to uh, play play hard the whole season being consistent and uh, obviously play well uh, system wise and stay healthy you know you have you have to have a little bit of luck but uh, for sure um, you know uh, the energy is there and uh, we are looking forward to um, the beginning of the season as for the exhibition game opponents made up of eight Belfast Giants and 14 players from elsewhere around the elite league 
for most, this was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Crazy playing against, you know, Chara and, you know, Lucic and Mark Recchi, guys that, you know, you look up to and, um, you know, they're obviously NHL superstars and it's going to be, it's going to be a very difficult game for us, but uh, we're going to have a lot of fun doing it. And of course, no matter where one is on the globe, it's a small hockey world. Bruins enforcer Thornton once dropped the mitts with Belfast Giants head coach Doug Christensen. In Manchester in the American League, um, and played against Thornton, I believe he was with uh, Portland at the time. And, uh, you know, I was a big guy, he was a big guy. I was trying to make a name for myself. And I asked him if he wanted to go, and he said, I'll do whatever you want to do. And uh, I said, all right, here we go. And, uh, well, he's where he is, and I'm where I am. So that's probably how the fight went. <laughs> uh, it was a minor, I think it was four years ago that Doug lined up beside me. He was in Manchester and asked if I wanted to fight. And I asked him if he was sure, and he said, not really, but I think he, he said, I think his exact words were, I think I have to here. So uh, we fought, there was a fight, whatever, and uh, we moved on after that. Uh, he seems like he's in a good place here now anyways, running the show behind the bench here. For the fans on hand in Belfast, they witnessed the biggest game ever in Ireland, north or south. Oh, it's brilliant, absolutely. The excitement, the whole hype of the whole thing is absolutely fantastic. Really is, and I've been coming here since day one of the Giants. By the way, from the NHL perspective, somehow someone started a rumor that teams that head to Europe at the start of the season can't win, that the players never recover and the campaign is too long. That's a myth. Last season, Chicago started in Helsinki. The year before, the Penguins in Stockholm. Both cup winners. The Rangers in 93-94, like these Bruins, preceded their season in the United Kingdom. This is our, uh, our local team, it's called uh, Guildford Flames. I mean, we're hockey fans. It's unusual for um, English people to like hockey because obviously it's an American sport and this, but I don't, we just watched it once and we really enjoyed it. Uh, and that's it really, I mean, it's just it's such a good sport to watch. The Bruins are one of six NHL clubs this year who hope to turn a hop across the pond into postseason pay dirt. Emerald Ice on Comcast Sportsnet, sponsored in part by Glacial Energy, returns in a moment. Hello Boston, I'm Edwin Farrell here in Malahide. I want to say hello to my son Adrian and his family in Hopkinton, just outside of Boston. Welcome back to Dublin. It's well known that the Irish ethnic heritage in Boston is deep-seated. What's overlooked, however, is the fact that there's also a very special relationship between Boston and Ireland on ice. The Irish American Hockey Association has been working hard, supporting and promoting youth hockey here for the last five years. Hockey in Ireland is in its infancy, especially the youth programs. That fact led John Cusick and former Boston Bruin P.J. Stock to form the association in 05, to share the game they love with those in the land of their families and ancestors. Yeah, and do whatever we can. You know, we, we bring guys over here. We had the Boston Bruins alumni come over for a week last year. We were in camps all week while we were here for the youth in Ireland. But as important, we have the kids come over two, three times a year, and they spend a full week each time they come over. And as I mentioned before, they're on the ice twice a day. We have a 50-minute skill session and we have a scrimmage with local teams. In previous years, the trips to the U.S. for the Irish kids seemed like a bonus. Now it seems like it's becoming a necessity. Why? Because the only permanent rink in the Republic of Ireland, in Dundalk, has closed. We hoped after we closed to get reopened straight away and get back onto our programs and get back um, just after the summer, but it still hasn't happened yet. And um, it's the only ice we have in the country, so leagues and, and figure skating programs and everything is just at a total full stop now at the moment. The decision to close wasn't so much a profit loss matter. Demand was high and the building was state of the art. The problems involved a partnership breakup, some personal politics, and associated lease issues. No lease, no hockey rink. At least not in Dundalk for now. Kinsella has already scoped out alternatives, including a natural fit near the National Aquatic Center and Sports Campus outside of Dublin. We've already established there's a great interest in this sport in Ireland, and to have it at this location would be fantastic. We've a lot of people in the area who want to start playing the game. We've, um, we've had rinks at Christmas, temporary rinks, um, so there's a great demand for the sport. It's a young population around here. We have a lot of people in this area and the greater Dublin area who would take advantage of, of this facility. Some of the kids who frequented the rink in Dundalk now head north and skate in Belfast, in the country of Northern Ireland, officially part of Great Britain. Other kids have simply dropped their puck. I, uh, I'm not doing really much now, it's just the Gaelic in up in Dowdles Hill and like, playing a bit of soccer out in the street and 
yeah, just a bit of hockey mess about in the driveway. Having to give up hockey shouldn't be an alternative. Although in the grand scale of things here, there aren't that many players, the participation numbers were on the rise. And the kids that are hooked, just like kids in Detroit or Boston or Winnipeg, are completely hooked. It's, it's really cool being a goalie in Ireland because uh, not much goalies come from Ireland. And uh, I just think it's really cool. Uh, it's a lot more fast paced, it's a lot more violent, and I like that. Uh, basically, most other sports, because you, you play them a lot slower, you don't get as much of an adrenaline rush as you would playing ice hockey. So that's sort of what I'm looking for. That's why I like the sport so much. I love the fact that I get to make new friends and I love just going on the ice. It's just so much fun. And I think that I love hockey the most is because once I started skating, I was just thinking, this is a sport for me. It's absolutely brilliant. I just thought, wow. I uh, normally play football in school, but after playing ice hockey, I hate football because all football do is dive. If you flick them, or in ice hockey, you take big hits, and then you get back up and go on the play. So it's a man's sport. Amen. It's a tough man's sport, but an equal opportunity one. Well, I got involved in hockey, just come up skating a couple of times, and then watched the Giants play, and, and just started off, learned to play, and then built myself up. Better playing with the boys anyway roller play with guys instead of the girls teams, more competition. As for the hockey parents here, the concerns are the same as anywhere else once introduced to the sport. It's rough and it can be expensive. Aside from her accent, Rosemary Coleman and her story could be from anywhere. And then he said to me, I want to start playing ice hockey. And I said, no way, you're definitely not playing ice hockey. Um, it's far too dangerous, banging, shoving, because there was a lot of the Belfast Giants have been playing. So I'd seen a few games, but I thought, that's too dangerous because he does he, he plays a lot of sports he plays football and Gaelic so I said that's enough and he said no please let me so at that time the rink had a lot of gear you know that they were given to the kids if they wanted to try it out and so eventually then he went on to it and he said no and they said to me he has got something why don't you let him play so at that then I did I remember buying the uh, gear and I said to him if I pay all this money for the gear you better go to training and her son Sean has gone to training religiously and it's paid off. For cynics or scouts, bottom liners who might think, who cares if they love it and work hard? There's no talent over there. Think again. Sean and some of those other young Irish athletes have naturally taken to the game. Hey, I was just um, in school and one of, the, one of my friends asked me if I wanted to come one day and I went and then, well, I didn't really like it and then I came again a few months later and I stayed ever since and that was three and a half years ago maybe. Some of the people in the rink I was friends with already and they just helped me doing drills and stuff and teaching me how to skate and stopping and I start like starting and stopping and I just kept learning how to go faster and faster every time I went on the ice. When he was over last March, uh, we had a few high school hockey coaches that were doing some on ice instruction with us and they were completely blown away that he's 14 years old, what an accomplished skater he is, what a, what a skillful player he is at the age of 14. So he, you might see him in Boston or in New England sometime in the very near future. And there are others following in his footsteps. Potential exists with support. Two things need to happen. Reopen a rink and continue to get fundraising support from across the pond. Every year we have the Irish American Ice Hockey Classic. This will be our fifth year. Um, five separate divisions. We have anywhere between 450 and 500 guys that come in from across the US, from across Canada. We've had a couple teams over from Ireland in the past. And uh, it's a great St. Patrick's Day weekend. It's four days, and there's five different skill divisions. We have one division that's made up of uh, all ex-NHL players. We have a college division, and it's just a great way to um, have guys get together from, from across the world. And it's every year on St. Patrick's Day in Boston. Hockey as one big family. In this case, one big Irish family. When in Dublin, the crew of Emerald Ice stayed at the beautiful Port Marnock Hotel and Golf Links, where the only thing overlooked is the sea.